Welcome back retro fans. This time out, US Gold's best games on the Amstrad CPC. Now it's hard to believe that I grew up a stone throw away from US Gold headquarters in Birmingham. Now they made some terrible god awful games for the Amstrad. But thanks to US Gold we also received some absolute classics. Kicking things off, number 10, Desert Fox. Back in the day I played the absolute tape out of this and make sure you only select Grandmaster. There's very little strategy in this game. It's pure arcade action all the way. Now that disappointed some, but for me there's a good balance here. And I'm personally obsessed with World War II, World War I, or any ancient battle. The ones where you're against unsurmountable odds, backs against the wall, no chance written off of winning. And here is a perfect example, Rommel Desert Fox. It lacks the speech of the Commodore 64 original, but it features all of the same highly addictive gameplay. And even now, the graphics look really good for an 8-bit, and I still play it every now and again. And if you get the chance to not only watch, but play it later after this video, you never know, you might thoroughly enjoy it. A very good game. Number 9, UN Squadron. Now US Gold back in the day signed I think a 10 game license with Capcom and UN Squadron was one of those games and it comes really close to the arcade original in every department apart from speed but I can't explain it despite the lack of speed it works it's fun to play and it looks terrific I even played the Commodore Amiga version I quickly went back to this it's up there with P47 on the Amstrad as well. If it had the speed of the arcade original, this would be the best game ever on the Amstrad CPC. It's just so well put together. It's a great package. Number 8, Rygar, Let's Fight. What a fantastic loading screen. Now this sets the scene nicely. Terrific music. It falls down somewhat with the graphics but the gameplay is absolutely massively spot on and if you're a fan of the arcade original considering the hardware and the fact that this was US Gold and the 1980s you couldn't ask for more than that it's missing the radiant beautiful sunset of the arcade original but it still looks good it's minimal but effective and I prefer to play this over any of the other 8-bit conversions although I've not played the NES version and I hear the Atari Lynx is very good. There's enough depth here for most people, and for me, a US Gold classic. Number seven, Outrun Europa. Now, I've played this on the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64, which is a good conversion. The Amiga was really good. I think the Master System version from memory was really good as well, but I love this Amstrad CPC version. There's literally so much to do. You start off in Blighty, you've got to get across the English Channel, you've got to avoid the police, helicopters, speedboats, and the graphics are really good. Some of the best I've seen on the Amstrad. And it's fast. Don't get me wrong, it's no Chase HQ, but I'm still outrunning. The sad thing is though, it was released towards the end of the Amstrad's life. Number six, Solomon's Key. Deep down, despite the travesty that is outrun, US Gold made some decent games and after doing this list I'm now more convinced than ever but one list won't suffice I say that because as I've played I realize that there's games I really like that haven't made this list so I figure people are going to be angry that I've missed out their favorite games but I really am stricken and torn because it's games like this Solomon's Key that are absolutely terrific and hence edged the others out in the arcade, this is probably one of my favorite games of all time. On the Amstrad, I'm blown away. Number five, Shadow Dancer. Every bit as good as Shinobi. And I know it doesn't look the best, but it plays like the best. And if you're up for a serious challenge, the type of challenge only Shinobi can give you, then look no further than Shadow Dancer. It's pretty impressive and wonderfully playable. It's fast and it's tough. And it's probably the best action game on the Amstrad. And the thing I love is that you've got a dog as a companion. 
I've also played this one on the Sega Mega Drive. Shadow Dancer on that is really good. So don't be shy, give Shadow Dancer a try. For an 8-bit computer, this is a fantastic conversion. Number 4, Beachhead. A fantastic game not to be missed. Every bit as good as the Commodore 64 original. And just like that version, a very enjoyable multi-blast. This was great value back in the day, and I feel like I need to pat somebody on the back. Well done Bruce Carver, or should I be thanking Access Software? It's carnage all the way, and it's great for getting rid of all that pent-up aggression. The side-scrolling tank stage is a bit of a letdown because of the choppy scrolling, but if that doesn't bother you, there's still a fantastic challenge here. Primitive by today's standards, and we all know the Amstrad is capable of more, but what we do have is well executed. Number three, and one of my favorite games of all time, World Class Leaderboard. It doesn't look like it, but this is up there with PGA Golf. That game came out several years later on the PC. Anybody can play this game, even your children. The game holds your hand in the beginning, but then lets you free to experience golf like a true professional. The first couple of leaderboard games released on the Amstrad weren't up to much graphically, so thank goodness for World Class Leaderboard because it righted all those graphical wrongs. And get this, I still play World Class Leaderboard today. Number two, Bruce Lee. Not only a fantastic game from US Gold, but also probably one of the best games on the Amstrad. Definitely a top 10. It's a two player game. There's lots of levels to explore. The difficulty is just right, but saying that, it must be one of the first games responsible for the phenomenon Rage Quit. Although he doesn't look it in this game, Bruce Lee is hard as nails. It's a shame there's no in-game music, and I wish the sound effects were better, but everything plays as well, if not better, than the Commodore 64 original. It's that time again, the ones that didn't quite make it, but would easily feature in a top 20. And the first is Turbo Outrun on the Amstrad. Now this is a massive improvement over the Outrun original. But saying that, I know, I know, it's still not great. There are people that don't like the arcade original, but I did, and I like this version as well. It's more of a driving game than a racing game. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't hold a candle to the Commodore 64 version. I bought this back in the day and really enjoyed it. Would I like more speed? Of course. And whoever drew the car, they've definitely never seen a Ferrari F40. But all said and done, this is Turbo Outrun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it leaves the original stalled on the line. Ah, Kung Fu Master on the Amstrad. Absolutely brilliant. Such a shame that they didn't include the arcade music. But it's the same challenge, the same game, finished in 8-bit. And the great news is, it's not a specy port. Okay, so our hero takes the lift. In the arcade original, he prefers the stairs. But if you can complete this game, you can complete the arcade and vice versa. It is missing that je ne sais quoi, but we have to remember this is an 8-bit and it's an Amstrad CPC. 1942 wasn't up to much on the Amstrad, but 1943 is a whole different ball game. The player controls fighter airplanes to destroy the aircraft and warships of the Imperial Japanese Navy. It's far from being historically accurate, but as an arcade game, it's a thing of beauty. Yoshiki Akamoto, the producer of the game, he come under criticism. People weren't happy that you control American aeroplanes to destroy the aircraft warships of the Imperial Japanese Navy. I get it, because men and women on all sides are innocent really, just following orders. I bet there's people out there thinking, why on earth has he chosen emotion over super cycle, winter sports, winter games, summer games, California games? My answer to that is simple. This is brilliant. But don't panic, we're going to need a part two. Sadly, it doesn't look as good as the Amiga or Atari ST versions, but it's just as colourful. And for me personally, like the 16 bits, it's an unmissable experience. Now, it's not as addictive as Tetris, but this one got pretty damn close. An astonishing game then, don't be without. Good old Nick Bruti and Dave Perry strike again on the Amstrad. And this one is a sight for sore eyes. 
The excellent artwork conceals shallow gameplay, which ultimately means the programmers kept the game simple. Last Fanatics will absolutely lap it up. Sadly, it doesn't really provide any long-term challenge, but graphically, it's an absolute stunner. One of the best on the Amstrad. It's also worth loading up just for the intro. You won't be disappointed. Number one. It had to be, didn't it? Gauntlet 2. Yes, the original's fantastic. And yes, Deeper Dungeons is brilliant still. But this is the one we all grew up on. This is the one that was the most fun playing with a mate. And it was probably the first sequel worth the cash. I mean, Gauntlet 2, when you sum everything up, is truly unbeatable. You can change the colour of your character, and if two-player, you can both now choose the same character. One thing that did annoy me is the music in the treasure room of the original is missing in Gauntlet 2. But if you want to see a top-class game squeezed into your Amstrad, then look no further than Gauntlet 2. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I've already mentioned, this definitely needs a part 2. Just for my own sanity, there's work still to do here. Please comment, let me know your thoughts. Please like, please subscribe, please share. But above all, stay retro. And until next time, ta a bit.